Idi Ferris for live from the uh, forecourt of the state house. We're still there. We'll bring you the live coverage of whatever is happening. But I hand over to my colleague Aisha Ibrahim uh, to bring you uh, news desk as we still go back to the state uh, forecourt of the state house when it is necessary. Aisha. Thank you Take very much, Kojo Paris. Welcome to Joy News. That's coming up this morning. Business community unhappy with finance minister's silence on scrapping of redundant taxes in 2024 fiscal budget as they vow to pass on the cost to consumers. Where businesses have so been overtaxed, it is not fair. Now we don't have any re reliefs, and the natural thing is to pass on the cost to the consume, consuming public. Found your leadership as extremely inspirational words of Chief Justice Gertrude Takuno as she lauds IGP Dr. Kufudam Pari for transforming the Ghana Police Service. More as the IGP assures his administration will accept constructive criticisms for a positive change. Uh, I have found uh, your leadership of the police extremely inspirational. Uh, I think it's only a very blind person who would not have noticed. Plus, former First Lady Theresa Kufo goes home today. We are still live at the funeral rites and we are the forecourt of the State House. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Many thanks for choosing us. Let's take you back to the forecourt of the State House, where currently the former First Lady is uh, her final funeral rites is being performed. Francis, our Archbishop, all the bishops, and all the clergy, we pray that God will endow you with divine authority for the end time assignment so winning that all around the world will hear about the salvation that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has so freely brought to us. For this we pray to the Lord. Dear departed mother, Mrs. Theresa Abakufo, that the Lord will give her divine forgiveness for anything that may hinder her, that the Lord will bless her and receive her into his kingdom, that he will look upon her with mercy in his faithfulness and grant her divine rest. She was a devout Catholic, a devoted mother, a loving and doting grandmother, mother to many. We thank the Lord for this and we pray that our example will be shed across the land for everyone, every mother to emulate. For this we pray to the Lord. from far and wide. We pray divine grace, traveling mercies, in the company of ministering angels as we have come here and as we return to our places, our places of origin. We pray, even as we leave from here, to go and continue our mother's funeral in Kumasi, that no one will be involved in any accidents or incidents and will not be, cause, be the cause of any. We pray that we'll travel in the company of ministering angels and arrive safely at our appointed destinations, coming back at the appointed time to give God praise for his faithfulness, his mercy, and his grace. For this we pray to the Lord. Family, 
we pray that God Almighty will send his Holy Spirit to come, comfort, and guide us. That he will grant us in his loving kindness everything we need to go on from here in faith, knowing that we will meet our mother again. Our wife, our mother, our sister, our aunt, whatever capacity and whatever relationship we had, we had with her. We pray that God would give us the strength to see, go through this difficult time. And in the end, we will walk in victory and he will get the glory. For this we pray to the Lord. time when we are recovering from global ills. May God bless Ghana and grant us the desired recovery that we may prosper as a nation. For this we pray. holders, particularly our president, our president, Nana Adedankwa Ekufuado, his vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and all the appointees, that God may grant them the presence of mind, the clarity of thought, to formulate the policies that lead to the recovery and the strengthening of our dear nation, Ghana. For this, we pray. Lord. and heal our souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive their sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will have our offer tree at this point. The ushers and the protocol staff will position the collection baskets in vantage points so that we can all make our collection. The Amamresu Youth Choir will lead us in songs of praise.
vouchers please come for the offer bowls and help us do the collection. Vouchers, the protocol vouchers please. Protocol washers, please come to the pledging point in the bowls and let's have the offer.
it's incredible. Bang on target. Driving a taxi in Accra is like watching DSTV. The drama is the Uber Biwa. Last time, my passenger cried in my car, sir. Hey, she be pushing her, Papa. DSTV, it go over you. Another one. It's magnificent. Oh. Bring it via. My child gets so many gifts, and that definitely includes the best of Christmas cartoons. Plus, it keeps her occupied whilst I get things done. We watch the Premier League on Super Sports, like we are in a stadium. Oh, Rashford was in an offside position, but he wasn't interfering with play. And Bruno score. This Christmas, dear, entertainment galore on DSTV. The contents just go over you. Dial star seven five nine hash to reconnect or stay connected now. Yeah, I see you guys enjoy life now. Right now, we'll be home, My people won't make me lose. Me. If they score, we are slow. Go TV Super Plus in T. We go watch all the Premier League matches. Come on, they finish. Official power! His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, in 2016 pledged to ensure free senior high school education for every Ghanaian child. Under the leadership of the President and the Sector Minister, Honorable Dr. Yao Ose Edishum, the first year enrollment has risen from 308,000 in 2016 to over 500,000 students being enrolled each year under the policy, making over 1.6 million children enrolled under the policy as of 2022. The Transformation Agenda series on education exposes you to the varied and various achievements of government in the area of education, delving into the policies, interventions, and infrastructure development that has occurred under the leadership of the president. Be my guest this and every Tuesday as we bring you documentaries from across the 16 regions of Ghana on Joy News between 6.30 p.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. Transformation Agenda Series on Education, Reimagining Education for National Development.
The 2023 EcoBank Joy News Habitat Fair is more than an exhibition. It's the gateway to your dream home. Don't miss this chance to make informed decisions about every aspect of your living space. Join us at the Accra International Conference Center from Thursday, November 23rd to Sunday, November 26th, 2023. This year, we are diving into the theme of home ownership, exploring the nuances between affordability, comfort, and luxury. We are bringing everything housing under one roof just for you. See you there. The Ecobank Joy News Habitat Fair is in partnership with Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank, and powered by the Pan City Extension Project from Cities and Habitats, Rent to Own, and sponsored by Elegant Homes and General Constructions Limited, where quality meets value. Global Lighting, your solution to quality lighting. Syntex Tank, Air Strong, Air Tough, Springfield Estates, where dreams are built. Virtual Security, Complete Security Solution, DBS, your roof experts. Virtual Infosec Africa, Security Solutions by Design. St. Gobain, making the world a better plan. Clifton Homes, beautiful homes, wise investments. The Kissington Heights, Airport City, Kumasi, by HDG Homes Limited. Perspectives, intriguing insight into the unexpected, the outstanding, and the diversity of culture, people, and lifestyles. It connects and evokes the sounds and scenes of uniqueness, of beauty, taste, and exciting glamour. It is life as we live it every minute with every breath. Chest Exhale on Outlook. As a live on journeys desk, let's go back to the forecourt of the State House where the uh, final funeral rites of the late former First Lady, uh, Theresa Kofo, is currently underway. In 1962, Theresa completed her midwifery part one at the Nuffield Maternity Home in Oxford, followed by part two at Paddington General Hospital on the Harry Road in London now known as St. Mary's Paddington. She also undertook a course in premature baby nursing in 1963 and obtained a certificate in advanced nursing administration from the Royal College of Nursing in 1980. Before continuing her studies in Oxford, she attended the Republic Day Dance in London with a friend in 1961. Unknown to her, a young man who had recently been called to the bar at Lincoln's Inn was also going to the dance. Coincidentally, he was planning to move to Ox Exeter College in Oxford to further his studies and had been advised by a friend to take a good look at Miss Theresa. John Ejokum Kufo had set his heart on working in public service and wanted to find a Ghanaian woman to support him in that career. He asked for a change of partners on the dance floor and introduced himself to Theresa. They became friends. The leader saw each other in Oxford and renewed their acquaintance. The following year, during a trip to Ghana to register for the Ghana Bar, John Kufour told his mother about his friendship with Abba. His mother knew the Mensa family. So she told him to take a bottle of schnapps to Ochesson, the Mensa family home, by way of an introduction. John was accompanied by his relative, Nana Dakut Kufo. 
at Ochesu, they saw Mami and her senior brother, Master Boyan, who recognized John from his time at the Government Boys School. J.H. Mensah Sr. was cordial and accepted a bottle of schnapps, but unfortunately, he died within a couple of weeks. The heartbroken Teresa could not attend their father's funeral. However, John Ejekum Kufo and his family were present. The couple decided to get engaged and were married at the Brompton Oratory in Knightsbridge, London, on the 8th of September, 1962. Theresa was sad that her father would not be walking her down the aisle. However, her brother, J.H., was in London on his way to a conference, so he assumed that role. The newlyweds began their married life in Oxford, and after they had completed their studies, they moved to Muswell Hill in London. The couple had three children within three years. The first, John Adokabo, also known as Chief, was followed by Anne-Marie Nanama Ampuma a year later, and Helen Nanasa the year after that. By 1965, the family had returned to Ghana and set up home in Kumasi. And Theresa began working at Tech Hospital on the campus of the University of Science and Technology. She had many friends and worked alongside her best of her friends, Mrs. Justina Osei In 1968, the couple had a fourth child, a son, named Edward Kojojokun. When the Progress Party won the general election of 1969, and Theresa Kofor's husband became a member of parliament, the family moved to Accra. He was appointed the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, so he traveled frequently on government business. Theresa focused on supporting him, hosting dignitaries, and raising her children. Her best friend Justina had also moved to Accra because her husband, Kobnajima Osei was also an MP for Asopa and a Minister of State. The did not, it was short-lived. In, 19, in, in 1972, on the 13th of January, the couple awoke to news of the government of Prime Minister Kofi Abrefebuzia had been overthrown by Colonel Ignatius Kutui Champo, who installed the National Redemption Council. Theresa's husband entered political detention at Asha Fort in Accra, while she was expecting her fifth child. She began to pay regular visits to her husband in prison and set about rebuilding her life with her four young children. Her brother, J.H., was also in political detention at Insawen Prison. She drew strength from her Catholic faith as she fasted and prayed. Her strength of character and determination to do things her way helped during this period. Family and friends rallied around with her elder sister's husband, Mr. Frimpong, a.k.a. Bench, and her mother, Mami, being among the frequent visitors to the small house in Kanda. In June 1972, Theresa had her last child, a boy, named Victor Kofi Ousre Friye Mensa. She befriended some of the wardens at Asha Fort, and they would sometimes come home for a meal and to collect her husband's laundry before their shift. Children were not allowed visits to the prison, a policy with which she disagreed. On Christmas Day, she took her children to Asha Fort, muttering a about them not being allowed to see their father. She told the older ones to stand outside by the small metal gate with bars in the wall which linked the cells to the waiting area. And she went inside with the baby wrapped in a cloth. Her determination paid off. Mr. Kofor saw the baby during that visit and waved to the other children as he walked 
with the guard to and from the visiting area. Mrs. Kufo was strict, but a loving mother. She taught her children to work hard, attend mass regularly, and always have faith in God. Their lives revolved around Christ the King Church and its school, which all the children attended. They were also registered as members of the Catholic Youth Organization and the Boy Scouts or the Girl Guides. She seemed to know everything that happened in her house, and anyone caught breaking a rule would be dealt with. She was a good storyteller, who had a way with words, and the house was always filled with laughter. She could whistle every family member's name clearly, including her husband's. She was sociable and caring, and had a group of loyal friends. She was also a mother to all manner of people, and the house was often full. Her husband was released from prison after 15 months, and they set about rebuilding their lives. In the middle of 1973, she began work as the first matron of the newly established Coco Clinic. The Third Republic was inaugurated in 1979, and Theresa's husband re-entered Parliament as the deputy minority leader. Family life was busy, and with the children engaged in extracurricular activities, while Theresa continued to work full time and support her husband. After Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins seized power in a coup in 1981, however, life became difficult. The couple decided to send the older children to London for safety. In 1982, the eldest two left, and they were followed a year later by the third. Mrs. Kofor was now supporting her family on two continents. She left Coco Clinic and ventured into self-employment. In 1992, it was decided that Ghana would return to diplomatic, democratic rule, and Theresa threw herself into supporting her husband in all his campaigning. She extended her network, attended rallies, and used her local language skills to good effect. She spoke Ga fluently too. She was at her husband's side when he won the nomination to lead the new patriotic party in the 1996 presidential election, and was there when he conceded defeat to President Rawlings. He ran again in 2000, and she became the First Lady when John Kofor was sworn in as President on January 7, 2001. Theresa shunned the limelight, but graciously accepted the responsibility of being a mother to the nation. As she was a nurse, she decided to focus on issues that had a bearing on women's and children's lives, the need to provide advice and vocational training opportunities for young women. Community run crashes, preschool facilities, and micro enterprises that would lead to long term self sufficiency. She attended Mass at Christ the King regularly despite her busy schedule and was often to be seen singing with the choir, which she joined in 1995. Mrs. Kufour set up a non governmental organization the Mother and Child Community Development Foundation to assist women and children living in deprived areas. Her achievements include the establishment of development centers in underdeveloped areas of Accra, such as Kotobabi and Amasamai. She facilitated the acquisition and installation of a mammogram machine at Sinyani General Hospital and sponsored training in soap making, dress making, Shea butter processing in such areas as Kumasi, Kofrodia, and the then three Norwegian regions. The foundation also built an equipped bakery and in Sawim. She spoke tirelessly about the need to curb the spread of HIV AIDS in Africa by setting targets for prevention, treatment, care, and support. She traveled extensively locally and internationally with, and without her husband. Theresa was a good ambassador for Ghana. She worked behind the scenes to influence government policy 
in areas such as free school feeding, free medical care for pregnant women, and free compulsory and universal basic education. After my husband left office in January 2009, Theresa continued her advocacy and support work through her foundation. She also spent more time with her children, grandchildren, extended family and friends. She visited her siblings, Brother J.H., Brother Peter, and Sister Ma often. She attended Mass even when she was unwell, because she did not want her brother to miss seeing her at church and worry. She was proud when in 2010, the Vatican bestowed on her the Papal Award of Dame of the Order of St. Gregory the Great. Theresa retired from public life due to ill health. She bore her illness bravely and with quiet dignity. She caught a cold at the end of August 2023 and was admitted to hospital. She rallied and was discharged after a few days, but remained frail. She slipped away gracefully and peacefully at her family house in Kediasi in the afternoon of 1st October 2023, with her family gathered around her. She survived by a husband of 61 years, John Ajakum Kufo, one sister, all five of her children, and 14 grandchildren. May she rest peacefully in the bosom of our Lord. Amen. We now invite the tribute by the husband, His Excellency, former President of Ghana, John Ajikun Kufu. A tribute by His Excellency, John Ajikun Kufu, to his beloved wife, Abba. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. Proverbs 31, verse 10 and 11. Shortly after what I now perceive as a clearly foreordained introduction by our mutual friend, Dr. Kwame Apiapogu, Abba and I met in person on 1st July 1961 at a ball at Battersea Town Hall in London to celebrate Ghana's first anniversary as a republic. Abba had just completed nursing school in Edinburgh and was on her way to pursue midwifery, a midwifery course at the Radcliffe Infirmary, part of Oxford University. I was also on my way to Exeter College, Oxford, having just passed my bar exams at Lincoln's Inn in London. My first impressions of my beautiful Abba were that of a soft-spoken and well-mannered lady. And within a year of bonding and courting, we both discovered that we very much enjoyed each other's company. We had the same cultural tastes in art, music, and cinema, and shared similar social preferences. Consequently, we decided to tie the knot. And this we did at Brunton Oratory in Knightsbridge, London, on 8th September 1962. We were joined by Chief, our first male child, on 6th September 1963. By mid-1964, shortly after completing our studies in Oxford, we moved to London to pursue our respective careers. Our second child and first daughter, Manama, was born in Golders Green in London on 29th November 1964. However, due to overwhelming pressure from my family in Kumasi, we decided to return home to Ghana. 
Shortly after our return to Kumasi in January 1965, I joined Okonfamochi Chambers as a junior lawyer with Victor Owusu as senior partner. Abba later joined the Kwame Nkrumah University Hospital as a nurse slash midwife. Soon after that, on November 4th, 1965, Abba and I welcomed our third child, Sa, into our rapidly growing family. Our fourth child, Ajikun, was born on 16 February 1968. By the time he arrived, I was already embroiled in the web of public service. I had been appointed in 1967 as the chief legal officer and city manager of the second city of Ghana, Kumasi. That was our entry into civic and public life in Ghana. Abba had a very confident personality that fitted in with ease everywhere she, we went and which also allowed her to cope under the most challenging of pressures. In 1969, I got elected as a member of parliament of the Second Republic for Achuma in Wabiaja in the Ashanti region. I then also got appointed as Ghana's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs under the premiership of the late Professor Kofi Abrafa Buzia. So, our young family had to relocate from Kumasi to Accra. Abba, to my delight, took our evolving life in her stride as she adjusted effortlessly and with confidence to our new milieu of a life in national politics and diplomacy. Between 1969 and 1971, with both Abba and me in our early 30s, our lives seemed to be on an upward trajectory. But this was to be truncated with a shocking and unexpected coup d'etat on 13 January 1972, which arrested practically all the members of the government and threw us in prison. Our world was shut, crashed. 54 of us, including cabinet ministers, junior ministers, and some members of parliament would remain in jail for a minimum period of between 12 and 15 months each. Having initially endured incommunicado for almost eight weeks, denial of any contact with family or the outside world at Ashraford prison, this angel of a woman, to my amazement, would survive the ordeal of raising five children on her own. In my absence, Abba gave birth to our fifth and last child, Kofi. As a single parent on 16 June 1972, her strong and exceptionally disciplined personality did indeed come to the rescue of our family. I could not have foreseen the crush that befell us and could not therefore have made any provision for our ordeal. However, Abba rose above that. With her strong, prayerful faith in God, Abba's spirit would not and could not be broken. She survived on very little then, and she truly kept our hopes alive. When allowed to visit me in prison, she left me with a sense of optimism that was most assuring. I survived my incarceration of 15 months largely because of Abba. She was a woman of sacrifice, devotion, humanity, and resilience. After my release from detention, she returned to practicing nursing at Coco Clinic, where she rose to the position of the clinic's first ever matron. Only once did Abba strongly protest about my absence from home, as my entrepreneurial businesses kept me away for extended periods of time. Her commitment to our marriage and her exceptional will to be a loving wife, a caring homemaker, and a firm but loving parent produced the fruit of what our children have become today. She was firm yet tender.
When I was elected to office as the second president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana, ABBA would play a pivotal but quiet role in shaping key social interventions, such as including the kindergarten stage for all the children of Ghana in the free compulsory universal basic education policy, the provision of one hot meal a day to primary school children across the nation, the launch of the National Health Insurance Scheme, and the introduction of free maternal care for all. She also worked tirelessly as the founder of, of the Mother and Child Community Development Foundation to support early childhood development programs across the country. Her foundation built three schools and gifted them to communities in Minyano in the central region and in Kotobabi and Amasaman in Accra. Through her foundation, she also provided a breast cancer screening unit to a health care services provider in Sunyane and assisted bakers in Insawam and Adiojiri with baking equipment. She established a phone-in counseling center to support and combat the stigmatization of HIV AIDS patients. Remarkably, ABBA rendered all her community action-based services without seeking any publicity. ABBA and I shared a gleeful sense of humor, which meant we could laugh at each other, just as we could naturally forgive each other for our unfailing human shortcomings. She and I embarked on many trips together as I pursued my political career and after I became president. However, what touched her most during our international trips was the recognition she received from Pope Benedict XVI, who bestowed on her the prestigious People Award of Dame of St. Gregory the Great. Throughout her life, she remained a devout Catholic, a passionate worshiper, and a parishioner of Christ the King Catholic Church in Accra. Abba, your departure has left an unbridgeable void in my life. But I take solace from the many mercies and blessings the good Lord has showered on our journey of 62 years. Living long, the blessing of beautiful children, 14 splendid grandchildren, the honor of having served our nation together, the gift of loving, extended families, and a network of friends around the world. I am so thankful to the good Lord God for giving you to me as my life partner. Abba, you have earned your good rest, and as the words of the Apostle Paul go, you have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. Now there is in store for you the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to you on that day, and not only to you, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Fare thee well, Abba. Adieu, my dearest love. We thank you for the beautiful tribute by the former president of Ghana, John Ejikunkufu. We now invite the children to give us the tribute to Mama Theresa. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18 says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for your life. This scripture is not negotiable, nor is it conditional. So we are compelled by our faith in and belief in Jesus, the Christ, to yield and to align ourselves accordingly. Therefore, in this instance too, difficult 
as it may be to reconcile, we give unreserved thanks to God Almighty, for he alone is indeed worthy of all the praise and glory. For the gift of your life to us as our mother, we are thankful. For the gift of your unconditional love for us, we are thankful. For the gift of having you to seed, teach, guide, and nurture our faith, we are thankful. For the gift of having you as our confidant and cheerleader, we are thankful. Our mother lived the Christian virtues of humility, charity, and fortitude. She had a deep faith in God, which she allowed to remain, which allowed her to remain hopeful, even in dire situations. She was prayerful and good at listening, which meant that amid the noise of politics, she was in touch with herself and could decipher her quiet inner voice. Our mother was a true Christian, very strong in her faith, and had an admirable personal relationship with God. She prayed about everything, even as she drove to school. We all prayed. Whatever difficulties you've, you had, her advice was first, and her guidance started with and ended with prayer. Ebisenyamia, to it, have you asked God? Bisanyami, ask God. And God doesn't make mistakes, so soldier on and bear your cross, trusting in Him. When you'd had a little time to wallow in your self pity, she would say, Oh, come off it, child, get on with it. You would always say, Mama, go before the Lord on your knees with every problem you encounter. Because He is the only one who can deliver you in times of adversity. Always remember to give Him thanks. It's not okay when everything is fine with you alone while your brother or sister is struggling with a problem. Always look after one another. Whatever you put your hands to, do it well to the best of your ability and do it completely. Have a plan and focus. Don't compare yourself to others. Always be yourself and be content with what you have. It's not enough to just know right from wrong. You must endeavor always to do what you know is right. Ma was the perfect blend of calm and emotional balance. The mother we knew as, a ch as children was a very loving but very strict woman. Always, although she was encouraging and supported all of us in our endeavors, she laid down strict boundaries and rules, and there was no escaping her discipline and her moral code. Mom was warm and gentle, loving, calm, and controlled, poised, very punctual, kind, and compassionate. She was very hardworking and a disciplinarian to the core. Right from our childhood, mom was tough on personal hygiene. Hey, mom, for one can can improve that time. She was strict on politeness, manners, and being considerate by cleaning up after yourself. You knelt down and prayed often, mom. You fasted also. You were strict and had rules which were hard to follow sometimes. One of the earliest rules was that we couldn't claim ownership of things that we found in the house compound. 
because it was your house. Everything, including the mangoes on the tree, belonged to you. If you were, we had to ask permission. The disciplinarian in you earned you many coded nicknames such as Severe, The Law, Chief Justice, and a few more. But somehow, you always knew it was you we were referring to. She was beautiful, stylish, graceful, but never given to excesses in her appearance. Her hair, which she, which was plentiful, was all close to natural as possible. And more often than not, she had it in a favorite simple pompidou hairstyle. She wore barely any makeup. We wish we could have spent more time with you, but I thank God, we all thank God, for the time we had. Thank you for loving us all despite our quirkinesses. You were the heartbeat of the family, and we would always gather around your bed, reminiscing and laughing about events in our childhood, including the punishments. We recently saw a plaque with the inscription, and I quote, to the world, she was a mother, but to her family, she was the world. You are our world, mommy. We love you and we miss you. But we'll be fine because God will never give us a burden we cannot carry, as you always said. Rest. Parish Priest of Christ the King Catholic Church, Reverend Father Ebenezer Kese, and his assistant, Reverend Father Donatus Pan, to make a presentation to the children. The offer tree has been presented to the children who have in turn offered it to the church for the completion of its projects. May the Lord bless all the children for their generosity. A sport of music by the Ghana Police Band. And while they are that, members of the press, I ask that you relocate and position facing the presidential days. Shortly, we get to hear the tribute from the state.
Peace Band. Preceding the tribute from the state is a poetry recital to be done by Ousua Apia Davida, affectionately known to us as Nana Mame from Ejira. She's the winner of the kids' traditional contest dubbed Oyeripat Dachi Hima. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ousua Apia Davida. <laughs> <laughs> 